Challenge accepted. Welcome back to Mist 4, as played by Andrew Teki. Now, you're not going to believe this, but um, I recorded three other videos that I realized afterwards failed to actually record. Uh, <laughs> the, the sound uh, uh, was fine, but the visuals were not. So, you're going to miss me, you going to miss all the footage of me attempting to figure out puzzles and you're just going to watch me figure them out. Um, yeah. There's two things that I wanted to do in this first video. <coughs> oh, excuse me. The first is to solve um, uh, Yisha's um, puzzle. Um, the second, <coughs> the second one, the second thing is to find, <coughs> to find out how to get to, um, the two, uh, uh locations, <coughs> where our friend, um, has trapped his two sons. Okay. Now, to go this way. Um, yeah. <coughs> so first, to Yisha's room. Fortunately, I write things down as I solve puzzles and I take photos and stuff. Right, this puzzle here. Actually, uh, before we go there, we need to read Yisha's journal again. Because that's where the solution is. <coughs> right, let's click on this. And I'm going to shut up now so that you can listen to Yisha herself dictate. Monday. I got this book. Dad gave it to me. I'm going to write in it every night. Tuesday. In the morning, we worked on long division. After dinner, I made a puzzle. Mom and me started the fun club and looked at stars. Thursday. I didn't do much. Sunday. We visited my brother today. He had a gift for me, but Dad... Man. Made me go home before I could see it. I felt bad. Dad talked to me later and said it was just bones, so I shouldn't be scared. I wasn't, because I don't think Agnar meant it to be bad. He looked so sad when we left. Monday. It was hot. I spent the whole day by the water. Saturday. Dad took me to a really neat place today. It's called Serenia, and the people there are so nice. They never forget <clears throat> stuff, because if they do, their memory chamber remembers it for them. I went inside, and I saw all the memory globes hanging from the ceiling, just like Sarah said I would. Made me go home before I could see Ooh, it. There we go. Monday. Mom said it's too soon to go back to Serenia. I've been thinking, though, and I don't know if I want my memories put inside a globe when I'm dead. What if I need them? Thursday. I told both Cirrus and Aknar about the fun club. They want to join. Wednesday. Dad finally said we could go see Anya tomorrow. She takes care of the memory chamber. She's one of its protectors. Only women can be protectors. Men stay in the village and do other hard stuff, like fixing roofs. Thursday. I saw the coolest creature on Serenia today. It was made of water, but when it saw me looking, it got shy and fell apart. 
Dad said it must have been a fish. <clears throat> Jumping, because he didn't see it. Mom believed me, though. Friday. Anya told me her people put their memories in globes so their families can visit them in the dream world. She said I could visit the dream world, too, but I'd have to learn how. Plus, I need a spirit guide. Maybe I can get one next time we visit. Sunday. I got the best gift of all time today. A spirit guide statue. Cyrus carved it for me himself. It looks kind of funny, but it's because he never saw one. He just went with what I told him. He knows exactly what questions to ask, and he listens better than anyone. Friday. Before supper, Dan and me changed the lock on my bookshelf. <clears throat> I said since I'm learning Donnie, I could change the covers and use everyone's name instead. Okay. I won't forget the who's older than who either. He said it really, really had to be the really last time, but he was glad. Thursday. We didn't do much, but tomorrow I start learning how to dream on Serenia. I'll probably be too busy to write in this journal for months. Sunday. Anya gave me a special necklace today. It's really good. good at picking up memories. She says some things are better at holding them than others, and that only the most powerful memories get shown. I touched it as soon as I got home, and it worked. I can't wait to show all my friends. So there you have it. <coughs> now the family tree, I, for I forget where I, I saw it. So it's either in the parents room or the dining room but the point is um, <coughs> okay of course the names are written here and because I did write this down you've got um, you've got uh, um, Atreus um, Catherine is his wife um, Akna, Sirius, and Yisha, which is that one. <coughs> Why not? Now, <coughs> I'm not even going to go down there. Uh, actually, what the heck, just go down there and just show you what we've got here. Might as well. And it's just like a secret floor. You can see some clothes on the floor and stuff like that, but nothing that we can touch this little touch the neck necklace with to get memories. So that's it. That's all that's here really. So let's head back, <coughs> and the next puzzle, <laughs> um, where am I? puzzle <laughs> to get to the linking box is in the parents room so again the family tree um, not only shows you the the ages of the group hang on we haven't looked at this yet it also shows you um, the their names in that specific writing Fish. An angel fish, it looks like. He's the one of them, anyway. Um, yeah, so. <coughs> Let's just head upstairs. That 
uh, bookshelf shelf uh, puzzle. <clears throat> Some say it's the toughest uh, puzzle in the game. And I can see why, because firstly, if you've got to be able to translate those names. You've also got to be able to um, find out their ages. Yeah, we've already read that journal previously. Uh, now, if we go into here, we'll have no way of knowing what's going on. Right? You, you can't, just to save time, I'll do this first and I'll show you. If you put the lights on, okay, and then you go into here. Actually, take note of that for a second. See those lights? That's because we switched on when we switched the lamp on. So let's now we know where, where we're supposed to go, but the order is very important. Okay, it'll be that one. Then I wrote it down as six six. Um there. Okay. Um, there, <coughs> there, there we go. I wrote that down because, in this game, because of all the puzzles, you uh, can never be 100% certain that the video is going to come out right. So you want to have these things saved so you don't have to waste time trying to figure them out a second time. So, uh, right now, oh look at this, it's, we've never looked at this before. Patience, my love. We've almost finished the linking chamber. There's just the security seal to install. But we will see our sons again soon, I promise you. Alright. <clears throat> yeah, I just had a glass of coke. That's why my throat is... the way it is. Um, right. Safety door being the um, security door being um, probably was going to be, I would guess, in front of this. If not, um, yeah, there you can see the uh, frame here. That's where it was going to be, but it was never installed. Right. of the videos that failed well at this point yeah but because I've still got 15 minutes left in this video because I now I actually know what to do we might as well go to our location and we started here so that's where we're gonna go next let's watch the cinematic So, first things first, if you look here, 
this is obviously the linking book um, to get back to. There we go. Um, to get back home, which we're not going to use yet. Secondly, you can tell this is where um, where Catherine and her husband uh, would have sat. I mean, they can pass things through that little door there. Uh, but this is where they would have. S you see, this is where they would have sat to speak to their son. And of course, this little guy here is obviously just to call him. Looks like this got damaged. <coughs> we don't know. Looks like this is how one of their sons might have gotten out. We don't know which son lives here yet. Or lived here, past tense. But we're about to find out. Anyway, so let's head downstairs. serves this didn't work yeah okay We're going to go down there later, trust me. Um, for now, we want to go across here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. design. I'll say that much. <coughs> Can we go up? No. Okay, so we want to go down. go further down but we're not going to go there yet um, because what we want to do <coughs> first is we want to explore around here a little bit First diary, I think, is it? 
Yes. Let's have a listen. It appears that I have underestimated him. I did not think he could be this devious. He always said Spire was dangerous, but I assumed he meant its people were violent. Violent and potentially xenophobic. The perfect combination with which to orchestrate a coup. But there are no people here. No prosperous civilization for me to rule. I see now how his linking panel fooled me. Congratulations, Father. This hand goes to you. I have established a temporary encampment near the Vegetal Cavern. The food I brought with me should last a month. After that, I will be forced to grow what I eat. The plants here are neither scrumptious nor overly abundant, but I have tasted several and find the nutrition is there. <clears throat> Turning now to the question of escape, I believe there may yet be a missed linking book here. The simplest way for Father to have disposed of it would have been to jump off the palace as he touched it. There are other ways, of course, but I cannot ignore this possibility. I must at least attempt to reach the ground. This is fast becoming unacceptable. I have slid down every oddly shaped windpipe in this age and have yet to see below the second cloud layer. I was fairly certain that at least three of the passages would prove successful. Yet even they dead-ended inside a magnificent sealed cavern full of crystals. The crystals themselves are curious. Something about their inner matrix makes them susceptible to a buildup of negative charges. When I touched one, I received a terrible shock. At the same time, the faint light that had been emanating from the crystal faded, and I heard a very curious hum, which ceased as soon as the crystal's charge was expended. I should like to study these crystals more thoroughly, and will institute a plan to mine the cavern extensively. <clears throat> Last night, I saw lights flickering in some of the other palaces. It occurred to me that I might not be alone. What if this age is like stone ship? Father never could explain how Emmett and Branch just appeared there. He said the art was always surprising him. Could it be that the lights I saw flickering were made by other people? What I would give to discover this is true. After all these months of solitude, just to have another person to talk to. About the floating rocks. There is a phosphorescent green mineral running through much of this age which exhibits strong diamagnetic properties. At least that is the most workable hypothesis I have devised that can explain how the rocks I see outside my garden are able to float. This has given me an idea. If I can capture one of the larger boulders, I should be able to turn it into a vessel and thereby sail across the clouds to the nearest palace. The most difficult obstacle to achieving this will be maintaining the necessary altitude. I have noticed that these rocks float higher than the highest point on that palace. Forcing my ship to float lower than it prefers will take some doing. For the past few weeks, I've been watching storms move through the second cloud layer. They appear as flashes of light inside the strata. The violence of these storms does not reach me in the garden. I encounter no rain, barely feel the wind. I am completely safe here, nestled between layers. I do not know how this is possible. How could Father have created a world which exhibits so many scientific impossibilities? He never did explain how to write an age. He never taught Agnar or I the art. I wonder now if I should have insisted. The crystals I mine from the lower cavern are really quite remarkable. 
There seems to be no limit to the amount of electricity they can store. Unfortunately, this makes working with them difficult. So long as a charged crystal is isolated, the energy inside it remains trapped in its matrix. But the moment the crystal even brushes against a grounded object, stored charge flows out, producing a most amazing song. I should like to capitalize on this singing ability, if only as a pleasant diversion. It might be nice to hear some music in these caverns. Regardless, I believe the crystals can solve my rock ship problem. By affixing them to some of the floating rocks, then casting them back into the clouds, I should be able to harness enough of Spire's natural electricity to fuel an electromagnet. The attractive force of the magnet, combined with the smaller magnetic fields of the lightning conductors, should be able to lower the ship and guide it to the nearest palace. It is definitely worth an attempt. Pleasant diversion. Another storm is brewing as I write this. I can feel the hairs on my arms starting to rise. I'm almost crazed with anticipation, waiting to test the first conductor. My god, is this what father felt? Every time his hand hovered above the panel of a book he'd just written? Did he feel this much excitement as he stood poised to learn of his theories and worked? Why did he never share this with me? If he had, perhaps things could have been different between us. The first conductor is glowing. Here goes nothing. No, 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 no! My calculations were perfect. The ship should not have broken free. The distance between the conductors must be too great. I'm going to have to add more to the system, but if I do, the electromagnetic pull will be too strong and the ship will crash to the floor. So can I counterbalance it? Create a second electromagnet in the roof of the garden? I am going to have to start building again and capture another rock for a ship. This mistake has set me back years, but I am close, so close to reaching the nearest palace and from there maybe accessing the ground. I only hope the linking book still works. Okay. <clears throat> so that's that. Change to its molecular structure, no buildup of illumination inside. As long as the crystal remains grounded, electricity just passes straight through it. Interesting. Not sure what I'm doing there, but anyway. <clears throat> Let's go look at his garden. Because there's some important clues hidden around where this guy lives.
Your faith in me is truly amazing, Mother. How long before I kill this one? You know, it occurs to me, I don't actually know where Catherine is in this, this game. Alright, so let's head to where we need to go. Just to say, instead of back down there, uh, yeah, we need to head to here, and you'll see there's that pole there. It's actually a ladder. Now, you'll also see that we can't get down here yet. Right? Um, <coughs> can do is look around here and see where we are exactly. Um, yeah. Because you can't see yourself walking per se, it can be a little bit um, difficult to um, sort of s know where you are in relation, or excuse me, in uh, relation to other things. This will be where he slept. <clears throat> what kind of a move is that? You had me, father. You totally had me. And now you're leaving your queen wide open? Getting the narrow chess pieces out of you is more of a challenge than this. We're going to call it here. <coughs> uh, we'll, uh, when we get back, we'll look at these clues. Um, but like I say, um, I'm going to call it here. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.